Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're covering a specific family, and I'll cover this linear face light. So it's a it's a light that you can place on any face, any like straight face in your project, and it also is a light. It's it's line based, so you're drawing essentially drawing a line on a face of a wall, ceiling, floor, whatever it might be in your project, and it will be a linear light. So if I go to the component itself, it's called LF for light fixture, linear face. So it's a linear and I'm gonna put it on a face. So typically what I wanna do is probably place it on a face because I built it so it's something you can easily place on any face in your project. So as I highlight over a face, I can choose a face. And as soon as I start drawing, I draw what it amounts to a line. So there's my line, and as I draw it in, or as I zoom in, I can see I've got the full family here. So what this is really, it's almost like imagine a thin beam with a light fixture on the end of it. Now this entire thing can be the fixture if you want. You can change the depth of this. With, I've got all the different parameters that you might want to edit this, and I'll go over those in just a second, but you can, this was originally built to look and appear as though it's a beam but it's a, just a, a thick light fixture with a linear light running along the bottom. In this case it's a face base and you can place it anywhere you want. So I'll, I'll select it and we've got some instance parameters to look at. First you've got the length that you drew offset from host. I'll go over that in just a second. The electrical stuff I don't really care about. I don't think you do either. If you do great. The left extension and right extension, it's hard to it's going to be hard to tell what is left and what's right. I could have chose endpoint one, endpoint two, anything like that. You can rename them if you want, but just know that it's one side or the other side. And what this extension is going to do is it's going to isolate the the beam, the the area that is below the fixture, so you could just extend the fixture out. So let's add some values to this. So I'll add half a foot to both and you can see what happens. So the light fixture itself, the, the linear light fixture portion stayed at all the way to the endpoints of the line you drew to draw this linear light. Whereas the offsets or the extensions that were brought back are considered to be this the portion below the, the linear light itself. So that six inches can be found on either end right there. So you might need to do this if you have a corner condition or if you have different things butting up to each other you don't necessarily want this structure or the, the, the whole fixture itself to continue on maybe you just need the, the linear portion to continue so in this case that's fine that looks great it's gonna function just like that obviously you can't add values that are over the length that you have of the entire fixture so I put eight feet here it's it's just gonna break and look weird. I don't do that just because it's just gonna happen. You'll know you're you've got something off if you see something like that. At this point, I can determine if this is a corner condition. So it, it's hard to tell that this has any significance to a corner until you draw it into a corner. So let's I will draw this into a corner, but first I actually want to cover the offset from host. I'm gonna remove these extensions so it's easier to understand what's happening but at this point now I want to determine this offset so maybe you want to use this not necessarily as something that extends from the wall ceiling or whatever it might be maybe you want this to be embedded into the wall maybe you want this to be a portion that's flushed out with the wall a light fixture that's flush with the wall so what you can do is you can set this offset so like I said the default width for this entire light fixture is going to be one foot you can change that, and I'll go over that in the type properties in just a second, but knowing that, I can change this offset to negative one feet. So the offset from the host is gonna be negative one feet. And at this point, it's gonna be embedded into the wall. So that looks kind of dumb, and you don't necessarily want that, but what we need to do at this point is cut it, cut the wall. So I'll choose cut, I will first select my wall, and then I'll choose my light fixture. And so if I zoom in real close here, you can see that the voids that are built into this family allowed this linear light fixture to be cut out from the wall so it looks flush and looks great. 
And obviously you can change this offset to anything you want. If you want it sticking out half a foot, put that at negative half a foot. You can see that it's halfway in the wall, halfway not, yet it's still cutting the wall. That's kind of the idea of what we want. So maybe you want this to flush out. And so I'll put this back at negative one feet and I will draw another up here on this ceiling. So if I go to component and then place on face and I can place this on the ceiling. I'm gonna apply that same negative one feet offset and then cut it out of the ceiling, just like that. So now I've got these two working together and maybe I wanna extend these all the way to the edge of the ceiling and then likewise the edge of the wall in just a second. So I'll put that at the edge of the ceiling, just like that. And then I'll move this one to the edge of the wall, just like that. So now let's line these up. So there's, you, I would typically align them to the, the edges of the light fixture right there. Now they're, they're lined up. So what we see here is it's a nice corner condition. And by nice, I mean it's almost nice, almost perfect. Because if I select this, I can see that there's some overlap in these light fixtures as they overlap. Imagine that. So this is where you would want to use the corner condition. And obviously because this is a corner. Like what, what do you want it to do? You want it to change based on your corner condition. And so I have built in these different angles which are going to essentially cut at an angle you determine to create the correct corner. So let's select the left and right corner. And you can see that what I got here from the edge there is that I've got this corner being 45 degrees and this one being 45. I'm going to choose the angles there. And now I've got these angles that are cutting. Now it's not the right angle because this happens to be an inside corner versus an outside corner. So at this point I can change this value and I'll change it to a negative 45. So I know what I need to do at this point is change this to a negative 45. And then I'll change this one the same way to a negative 45. And I can see that my result no longer has that weird overlap that I was not wanting to see. And now if we look up here, we can see that there's this nice inside corner. Now the thing about inside corners, unfortunately, is that this family is just too difficult to make inside corners work. As you can see, I can see that wall there, which, you know, it's just not going to work that well. But I will show you a good outside corner condition where... I can tell you that it is working just fine, it's not a problem, and the corner condition works just fine. So I'll select that face, and then I'll draw another one on this face. Let's go ahead and make sure we have those offsets. Yes, we have that one foot offset in there. I can now cut them from the wall, select the wall, cut that, select the wall, cut that. And again, I will line them to the edge of the light fixture. It's going to be there and there. That's fine. And because they're both going to be corners, let's now make them corner conditions. So I'll have a corner, turn that corner on. I'll go ahead and turn both on. So now we've got corners and I'll line these corners up right there. Now all I need to do is take into account the width of the wall. In this case, the wall is just a generic eight inch. So I can make these, these extensions eight inches. I will actually need to cut the wall opposite from the other light fixture. So basically cut them from each other. And I need to make this a corner condition because we are getting pretty close here. This needs to be a corner condition on the right. There we go. And so now we can see that you've got a nice looking corner condition there that looks exactly like you'd want. So I'm gonna go to graphic display and turn ambient shadows on so we can see this a little better. And we can, there we go. So you can see there's a nice, this nice linear light that's continuing throughout this outside corner, working just fine. You do have to cut a few different things, get your extensions working right. Uh, that can be kind of something you have to fiddle with. It's just something you're going to have to fiddle with. It's through instance parameters, so it's not too difficult. Um, finally, let's look at the 
the type parameters. We've done all that. We looked at the instance parameters, looked at the corner conditions. Let's look at the type properties. <clears throat> the default elevation does not matter because this is a face-based family. Again, does not matter. Don't worry about that. You never need to touch that really. The fixture material is going to be set to default. Same with the light source. So the fixture material will be everything except that interior portion of the family. So if I zoom in here, the fixture material will be everything that is on the outside, whereas the light source material will be these three faces inside of the light fixture itself. The idea is that you, that light source material is something with the self-illumination, so it can give it a bit of a glow to make it look more like a light fixture. And finally, the fixture height, we can see, I'm gonna go to a plan, uh, an elevation view, the fixture, fixture height here is this dimension and I'll actually go to the left the, here is the the height so the, that one foot is again that full height of the fixture you could change that anything you want the fixture width is going to be the width there obviously the void height if for some reason you don't want the void to cut completely through the fixture or you want to just change where it cuts that's where you can change that I have it default into one foot one which is going to be an inch larger than the height so as I change this height you can see hit apply and I go back to the yes the void height will still be that so it just take keep that into account take that into account the void height whether you want it cutting this or not there it is uh, the light source symbol size you don't need to mess with that I I typically don't show those in views just because it's ridiculous once you get a lot of lights in there so don't worry about that either all that's taken care of within the family down here you don't need to change the fixture base either and uh, you can affect some of these photometrics if you want if you want to change the actual look of the light if you're using programs like Inkscape, V-Ray, whatever that that's where that will come into play so finally let's go into the family and take a look at some of the parameters you're gonna see mostly the same thing but here's the family I'm gonna go to the parameters you're going to see all the same information here. But now what I have are some extra formulas that make the corner conditions work. As I checked, check this being a corner, then the value of this changes. And the value is now looking at this angle. The default is going to be 45. Right now, the corner value is set at 0 because I don't have the corner checked. As soon as I do, the value is 45. The value here, I change this to 30. That will change down there to 30. And then you're gonna see an, an angle of 30. I'll put this back at 45, so the default is 45. I'm gonna turn that material off, so now you have the choice to choose these two different materials. I'll hit OK. You're going to receive this error. It's, it's because I have the voids that are creating the angles that I'll show you in just a second. I have them defaulted at zero, which means they're straight up and down, and there's not any value to the void, if you will. So the extrusion itself is kind of on top of itself for the void so you don't need to worry about this it's not going to cause any errors in your actual project so now i actually have a nested family which is the light fixture itself which is this portion there the light fixture the source i'll edit the family here and if we go to a front view we can see where these angles are starting to come from so if you have an angle of zero for the corner condition that's going to be straight up and down, and this is where the error comes into play. So right now, the default, again, is set up at 45, but in the project, zero is fine, doesn't necessarily matter. There's not a whole lot to this other than you've got your left and right angles. You've got these angles and voids right there that are cutting into the extrusion for the light fixture itself. I will load this back into our fixture, our linear fixture, save that. I can save that later, not a big deal, but I'll go ahead and load it back into the, the fixture. And then I'll load this fixture back into our project. Go ahead and save that. And that's gonna do it. It's gonna be very, it's a very simple light fixture. You, this, again, this works in floors, ceilings, whatever you want. You can use the void to cut it out. I definitely like this for outside corner conditions because you've got this continuous looking light fixture that's gonna continue around the corner. I could even change this angle of this wall. I'm gonna change this to 135 in this case.
I'll go to this side view and now I can drag this endpoint to the edge of the wall. And the same with this other light fixture, drag the endpoint to the edge of the wall. Now that we have this wall angled at 135 degrees as opposed to 90, we need to deal with the angle that's missing in the light fixtures here. So we are pretty close, as you can see, to getting this angle, but we need this angle to line up correctly. So one way we can determine what that angle should be is to take the, the length that you were at before, the angle we were at before, so we were at 90 degrees and we went to 135, so we added 45 degrees. So in this case, we kind of need to do the inverse because we're dealing with like an opposite angle. We need to deal with the inverse, and because also these light fixtures are taking up half the angle each, we need to half that. So if we were at 90 and we went up 45 degrees, but we're dealing with the inverse, we need to take away 45 degrees. So if we take away 45 degrees from 90, we're at 45. So what we need to do then would be to split that in half for each one of these angles. So that's gonna be 22 and a half degrees. So I believe it's the right corner. So 22.5, that updates. And we could see that is in the center. I believe it's the right corner here as well. Yes, and as we do that, the center lines up nicely because we're now splitting the difference in that case. So you're taking what's left. You could even do it this way. You take what's left of this angle. So 135, you've got 45 degrees before you get to 180 degrees. So you've got your 45 degrees and it's really the angle that's left that you need to then half and split between these two light fixtures to get your corner condition correct. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, feel free to ask questions. And as always, for every family that I have, I'm going to offer it up for free on my website. The link for that will be in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please demolish that like button. It really helps. Also subscribe, that also helps. There's gonna be a lot more videos coming out, whether it's regular Revit tutorials, Dynamo scripts, other Revit families. Sure hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.